How did the universe create religions to find itself? I am your host and guide, Matias Stefano. In this episode, we will explore how different paths brings us to the same truth. In Atlantan times, the 12 families were like people who we used to ask for advice. And then we had this circle of people representing the different workers of the region, and they were representing the spirit of the people. We call that the projections of gods. So each one of them had the face of an animal that was related to their work. And that's why in the times of this connection, they start to honor those animals like they, if they were gods, and the priests like if they were the gods himself. That brought the confusion of uh, animalistic religion and they started to honor the concepts of the universe in a different way. As Jahud said, the goal for humans is to become gods on this planet, to become the portals through time and space in flesh, in blood. And that is why the main preparation that we had was to create the patterns within that could help us enlighten in life. The purpose was not to reach the spirit, it was to allow the spirit to live in this reality. So those who were able to open the doors to the spirit to this reality without willing to escape this reality were the enlightened ones, those who were the mirrors for thousands of people to understand that they were sent here as messengers of this divine on earth. There were a lot of people that accomplished this divine on this planet. There were a lot of people that reached the enlightenment in this world. And they were the people that could live at the same level, the suffering and the pleasure. To be balanced in all this process of enlightenment, you needed to put all the darkness together and transcend the darkness through transfiguration. And this transfiguration, it was the code of enlightenment in matter that people like Krishna, like Jesus Christ, had connected. The words that connect them all was the messengers. And messengers, the ones that are here bringing the voice of the universe, the emissaries were said like Christa, or Krish. These are the words in which ancient language would call those who were sent to show God. So that's why many of the names that were used to describe those who had been enlightened are similar in history. When we start to reach the truth of the universe, we may ask ourselves which is the best way or what is the truth, or what is the path, or what is the method we could use to get to the truth. But the truth is that there are so many ways to get to the core of the universe, that everything is really connected. Then there is no one way to go and to find the truth. There is many. In the ancient times, we used to say that everything is stick and connected like a network. So for us, everything was waved by a spider that connect every different path in the universe in the same network. And that helps us to understand that everything really is connected and there is no one path towards the core that is more important than others. These different aspects we call now in Hebrew language, like the names of archangels. Archangels means the most important messengers. Arche coming from the words in Greek meaning the powerful or the highest one and angel the messenger. So the highest messengers or the most powerful were the different aspects in which the word El was expressed in the universe, which were 12 of them. Some of the most known that we use today was uh, Michael, Uriel, Gabriel, that are the vibrations that represent 
Michael, who like God, who like the truth, the Uriel, the light of God, Gabriel, the strength uh, of God, and many others that represented the positive and the negative aspects of this creation. One of the most known and that is related to our thoughts is Raphael. Raphael means the physician, the, the, the healing of God. And this aspect was in, incarnated in everyone that was working with the body, with the, uh, with the physics, with, with the healing process of our matter and the third dimensional realities. So that's why the aspect of Raphael, even today, the physicians has the symbol of Raphael being the doctor of the universe and incarnated through the image of Hermes, which was the priest of medicine in Atlantean times, Chahut. So archangels are not beings with human shape. They are aspects that go through all the universe and that holds the vibration of the 12 aspects of reality. So we are all projections of those archangels. We are all messengers of those first 12 spaces that fill the universe. In order to leave or let the spirit to come to the world in flesh and blood, you need to open the doors in the proper harmony. And to be harmonious, you need to have the perfect vibration. And that is why in your own blood, in your own DNA, in the cells, in every organ, you need to be balanced and aligned with what you do, what you feel, what you think. And the vibration to accomplish that was what Jahud and other people from ancient Atlantean Atlantis taught to, to, to reach through the chantings, through the meditation, through the symbols that were spoken, the word of the truth. And those knowledge were taught by the Arturians who were the beings in the confederation that knew about physics, that knew about how to transform realities through sound. And that is why the blue ones are still alive in those who accomplish the enlightenment through the vibration of blood or the vibration in the DNA. When a human being accomplished to open all the portals in matter to the spirit is what we call enlightenment. And it's the moment when you feel uh, so full of, of happiness, so full of love that you could love unconditionally everything. You can feel everything as a part of you. You forget of who you are and you become everything. So this process of, of enlightenment is when you feel the highest vibration in the third dimension, when you feel fulfill in the third dimension and you are not willing to leave the third dimension but you are willing to feel everything in the third dimension just one moment that connects you with the transcendence of the third dimension and then you go to the fourth dimension instantaneously when you recognize that you are the process of everything that happened that is happening and that will happen you can see everything from every perspective. You can see that you are the one that express, that experience, that is integrating and that transcend every process. So time and space start to be bounded and you feel it all in just here and now. And that's the concept of eternity. When you accomplish the here and now, the four pillars of time and space start to become just one and you can see them all from just one spot. This is like stop looking from outside the atom and look the atom from within. It's like looking every creation surrounding you from the spot that connect all the realities. And that's the fifth dimension. So in order to go to the fifth dimension, 
have been shooting go up to the heavens, the beam should go deep into the atom structure to see the electrons, to see the light that creates every matter that we are in. So that's the enlightenment, when all the patterns of reality are aligned in the same vibration and everything that was a chaos just shine in the same perspective. So it's like putting all the colors of a rainbow in just one light again, in one just structure, which is white. This ray of light makes the enlightenment possible and you can only achieve that enlightenment through the third dimension because the only way to see every perspective and have wisdom of that is if you had experienced every perspective. That's why the, the ascended masters that we call now from, from who we receive information from other levels of consciousness, they are the spectrum of those people that used to live in the planet that had accomplished the enlightenment of the whole process in time and space. The ascended masters that live in the fifth dimension, they are not up, they are within. So deep within that you can see the light of every electron vibrating in the same pattern of harmony. Fifth dimension is to see the coherence in everything and that's why they become masters because they accomplish to learn everything in the matter and now they are able to teach to show by experience by showing their own actions how it is to be enlightened.